Okay, today's story is Daniel's Dinosaur by Mary Carmine and illustrated by Martin Bacon. <laughs> I think it's Bacon. Um, open your eyes, turn on your ears, and here we go. Daniel loved dinosaurs. He loved big dinosaurs and he loved little dinosaurs. At the library, he read books about dinosaurs. When he drew pictures, he drew pictures of dinosaurs. When he wrote stories, he wrote stories about dinosaurs. Daniel's dinosaurs were everywhere. Two platosaurs lived next door. <coughs> A Segnosaurus sat behind each checkout at the supermarket. An Allosaurus directed traffic and one unknown variety barked at him from behind a high fence every morning as Daniel passed by on his way to school. Daniel's teacher was a nice, friendly, plant-eating Diplodocus, but sometimes... She turned into a big, fierce Tyrannosaurus. I wish you'd think of something else sometimes, said Daniel's mother. Why don't we go to the city and visit the aquarium? That's a good idea, said Daniel. I like fish, but not as much as dinosaurs. It was a long drive to the city. All the way there, Daniel drew pictures of dinosaurs. A smiling ceratosaurus took their money at the ticket office. Daniel and his mother looked at the rock pools, the seahorses, and the little fish. They looked at the stingrays and stayed for a long time. They looked at the octopuses and stayed even longer. Then they looked at the sharks and stayed for a very long time indeed. <clears throat> As they left, Daniel said goodbye to the smiling gray nurse shark in the ticket office. Daniel's Dinosaurs by Mary Carmine, illustrated by Martin Bacon. And I like, I want to go back to the last page. I like how now Daniel's Dinosaurs are gonna, is a shark. Do you think he's going to be all about sharks now? I think so. Okay, so for today's art, we're going to do footprint dinosaurs. Damien's going to be my um, his participant, <laughs> foot model, if you will. <laughs> Okay, so I have white paper. Um, I'm going to use orange paint and let's paint her feet. We're going to have to paint both feet. Okay. Since her feet are a little bigger than your feet at home, I'm using a full sheet of white paper. Okay, let me paint your foot, including the toes. So, I'm going to need you to just carefully stand up with your foot like that. One, two, three. Okay, now sit back down. Can we lift it up? Yes, please. Okay, so there's one foot. And then the other foot we're going to do at an angle. So now 
this foot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna fall again. That's alright, you've been walking outside. Okay. So what we want to do is I'm going to turn the paper and we're going to have it overlap just a bit. Okay, stand up. Now sit back down. Oh, that's my goo. She has <laughs> a very high arch. <laughs> hey, be nice. <laughs> so I'm just going to close it in a little bit with paint. But this is the back of the deck. Well, here, let me show you. I have my Sharpie. So this will help you visualize it. This is the dinosaur's tea. I thought I had you brought an eye. Well, mm -hmm. and then when the paint dries, I would make a big eyeball right here. And then this will help you visualize my dinosaur footprint. Have fun with it, use whatever color you want, and as usual, I would love to see your kids' dino feet. Thank you for watching, bye-bye. Okay, so now I'm gonna just stick my eyeball on, and then there's my dinosaur's eye. I'm gonna give him a scary eyeball. And so now he's got his ferocious teeth, his big scary eye, and he's a bumpy dinosaur. Thank you for watching. Okay, so for today's um, science cooking, we're going to be making dinosaur fossils. And so to create the fossils, we need to make salt dough. And salt dough that I'm making is half a cup of flour, half a cup of salt, and a quarter cup of warm water. Let me warm my water up. Okay, so I've got the water in the microwave. It's warming up because it needs to be warm water to be about done. Yeah, okay. All right, so I have my warm water. I'm gonna add it into my half a cup of flour, <laughs> half a cup of salt, and I'm gonna mix it together. And it's gonna create this dough to make our fossils. So I'm going to grab a spoon. So I'm going to mix the dough together. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to make using my hands. You don't want to use a, um, you don't need to use a cookie cutter or anything. You can though, you can use this recipe to make, um, salt dough hearts or any shape you want and you can paint them and make things out of them but since we're going to make them into fossils we're going to want it to look more of a natural color okay so mix my dough together Okay, and then I'm going to take some of the dough and I'm just going to mash it together. Whoops, almost like Play-Doh. Okay, I think it's mixed well enough. I'm going to take it out of the bowl and I'm going to put it on here. And then I'm just going to use my hands instead of a rolling pin to kind of squish it out. Get it level. And then I have some little dinosaurs and I'm gonna use these to make my fossils. And fossils are impressions that are left behind after an animal or even plants 
died. And thousands of years ago, when the dinosaurs roamed the earth, when they died, they were either in mud or soft sand. And then that mud and soft sand formed rocks. And that's how their impressions stayed so visible for us to see today. So here's my three dinosaur impressions. And then we're going to cook my fossil at 350, de 350 degrees for 30 to 60 minutes. And the reason the time varies is because you're just watching for it to turn brown, like a light brown color. And it varies because of the thickness of the dough that you're using. So we'll come back to this in just a bit. Thank you for watching. Okay, so now my dinosaur fossil is completely done cooking. I let it just get lightly brown and it's hard. And so to make this show up just a little more, I'm gonna add some paint to the fossils. The impressions. made quite a hole in this one but there's here, let me see I can get my brush in and all the nooks and crannies of it but hopefully this shows up that you can see the impression with the brown paint in it. And then here's this one without paint. And then this one as well, which, you know, might show some of the detail. Yeah, it's deep, but you get the idea. As it, the brown paint is drying and working itself into the deep impression left by the little dinosaurs, we can get a better picture of these. So we can look at these now. I've added a little bit of paint to two of them. And as they're drying, the details again are starting to pop out in contrast to the surrounding area. So there's the first dinosaur I painted and the second dinosaur I painted. And then this is the last guy that I have not painted and you can still see the impression left or the fossil of our dinosaurs. Have fun with this and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.